People are throwing it all over their Instagrams. Do they really? Yes. Influencer, INFJ, and I'm like, what? And I forgot what that was for the longest time. I realized, I'm like, wait, this sounds familiar. This is that, ah, this is that test. MTBI is the new, what's your star sign? Hello, beautiful people. So we're making this video today because we want to talk about how opposites actually do attract. A lot of it has to do with our personality types, which Leah has laid out for us in an MTBQP method. And she's going to talk a little bit about why people have misconceptions about introverts and extroverts, why introverts and extroverts can make excellent couples, model couples if you will, <laughs> and why it actually strengthens our relationship that we do understand each other from the perspective of an introvert and extrovert. First of all, we're gonna start off with what the MTBI test is. The abbreviation stands for the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. And it is a test that focuses on 16 different personality types that apparently every person on the planet, you either fall into one spectrum or the other. So when Justin and I say that he's a classic extrovert and I'm a classic introvert, you need to know that there is a range. This test focuses on all 16 different personality types. Um, we can leave a link below if you would be interested in taking it. But Justin and I are focusing on the introvert, extrovert um, portion of our relationship because it is a huge indicator of like your overall personality, like the, the forefront of who you are and how you navigate your environments is if you're introverted or if you're extroverted. The way that extroverts are perceived or the stereotypes that, that people um, have with extroverts say that they're always outgoing, they're loud, they demand attention because of insecurity, <laughs> they don't know how to be alone. These these misconceptions, um, these stereotypes that people have about introverts and extroverts actually play out in society in a very large way. There is a favoritism towards extroverts in many employment opportunities. I know that I've gotten jobs that I've not been qualified for simply on my personality type alone, while others who are more qualified were overlooked because they were an introvert. And that's not to say that either one of us was 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 better at the job it's just that as an extrovert society prefers my personality type i think there's a favoritism there that's probably imbalanced and unfair and i take full advantage of it i do <laughs> most people think that introverts are just shy and if they wanted to go out and make friends and be social they could they just need to try a little harder yes. you're anti-social we don't no. know how to make friends you're incapable of surviving <laughs> unless we're adopted by an extrovert <laughs> a lot of people are not aware that the reward center for introverts and extroverts uh, when it comes to our brains it is literally wired differently the neurotransmitters that extroverts use is dopamine all right tell me what you know about dopamine it can be addictive it is a fast hard hit of uh, of a reward when there's something that brings you pleasure the dump is a lot faster with dopamine this means when you're doing things such as forming relationships and helping people and being outgoing, you literally feel happier. So it's not showing off, it's not the need for attention, it's the fact that literally helping people brings you pleasure. Yeah, the brain chemistry is such that when those activities are engaged, I'm getting the most pleasure. There you go. More so than sitting alone in a dark room under a blanket reading hey, a book. Hey, in a cocoon. <laughs> Acetylcholine is uh, another neurotransmitter. It is a slow, steady, happy drug introverts receive when they are in non-stimulating environments, when they are in solitude, they are reading. Acetylcholine literally allows us to have time to be able to process our thoughts, to think uh, deeply to disconnect our emotions to see the logic in things and that actually makes us happy. We do go out and then you come home and you 
this big sigh of relief and then you go off to be by yourself, you're not being antisocial. No. You I'm recharging. are recharging. You're recharging mm -hmm. and you're using acetylcholine to recharge. Yeah. Not that I don't enjoy going out with Justin, I just have a time limit before it becomes overwhelming for me and I need to make sure that I have time to be able to recharge. And Justin's really, you're really good with that. Like, Thanks. We will go out 1000% and as soon as we get home we both go our separate ways. Justin is still pumped from the night that we have had doing whatever it is that we've had and I'm like, I need downtime. Being on either end of the spectrum or somewhere on that spectrum of introvert extrovert, it's, it's not a choice. There is a difference in the brain chemistry that affects the personality and it's not something that you can will out of your partner. It's not something you can beg or negotiate out of your partner. It's something that you have to, if you're going to have a relationship with someone that is on a different level of the spectrum of introvert extrovert, you're going to have to accept. Because they believe the stereotypes and because they believe that introverts would get along much better with introverts and extroverts would get along much better with extroverts because they have the same personality traits. We are asked that, how are we still together? Or, or how did we get together in the first place? I often tell people that opposites attract. That's how this works. I think there's truth in that statement because we are able to balance each other out. So there are other traits, lovely, lovely traits that Leah has, characteristics I should say, that go along with who she is that contributes to the balance of, of our relationship. And I, and I think the same can be said for me. If I go out and spend the night out with, with friends and she's uninterested in going, there's no like criticism of me being an extrovert. I now know not to press certain buttons. Press like, button. come on, come on, squat, come on, come on, come on, come on, come uh. on. They've never met you. They want to know who you are. It's just dinner. It's only just, just dinner and then drinks. And then maybe we'll go out for karaoke afterwards. Come on, come on, come on. And that's what I've come to realize. It's always better for me. But I think the compromise is that we have that limit, right? So I will go out with you. I will stay with you for dinner. I will commit for that one hour or two hours. And then I go my separate ways. And then you get to go out to karaoke or um, other things that you want to do. Whenever we have disagreements, <laughs> And the disagreements are presented from an emotional standpoint of wanting to talk through to get to talk the, through what you can't even talk say through the, whatever talk through what talk through the issue no talk through what you can't even say the words <laughs> feelings we're gonna talk through our feelings Dustin gets to the root of a problem by talking through feelings I want facts the introverts tend to look at things with a lot of logic that is how I take in my information that has become something that we have had to balance out. That's something that had to be learned too. Practiced. It's not just learned. It's something that you make a choice to engage on daily. But it's to be able to appreciate it, respect it, and acknowledge it, and sometimes go with it. Another thing to consider with regards to how we make it work, setting boundaries. I'm like a Labrador Retriever. When Leah comes in from work, I bound over to the door you do. and I help her try to help her take off her jacket and all the other motorbike accoutrement. I know. Justin is really energetic and when I have worked a 10 hour day, the first thing that I want to do is disconnect from work and that's all Justin wants to talk about. I want to hear about your day. How did you feel when you did so and so and what are you going to do tomorrow? What Justin was talking about that we go through is really in actuality only 15, 20 minutes but it took me like a year to ask for that 15 or 20 minutes like dude I just need you to shut it down <laughs> until I get through the door and the thing was it was so emotional for me to ask that of Justin whereas when I finally got the courage to do it Justin was like alright and then he just I was like what the hell that's so it was that easy it was <laughs> so she talked about feelings and I was receptive mm, she said yeah. it makes me feel like da 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 whenever you come over and Labrador retriever my face <laughs> that has made a huge difference in our relationship because having that 15 20 minutes to recharge allows me to be there and present with him 100% for the next hour or so on how long we're kicking it before we go to bed and the boundaries for me? What's the boundaries for you? You have no boundaries. I have no boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> I think another challenge that we have in our relationship is extroverts. They see the big picture on how things are, whereas introverts focus on each individual aspect that it takes to get the bigger picture. I like to go for the overall understanding of everything and then work my way back. It may be like a deconstructionist 
perspective on things like Leah likes to start with one point, move to the next point, move to the next point, move to the next point. We eventually will meet along the path somewhere, but trying to have the patience to find each other at that point. That is so true. That's the challenge. That is, that because is a if, big challenge. If we have enough time and we give each other enough time to process things the way that we do and then come back to each other with that process being fully complete and say, okay, now let's talk about it. We do a lot better than if we try to work together at the same time on the same objective. Because we literally will have a conversation that sounds like we're at odds when really we're not. We're saying the same thing. I think every day it is something that we are learning about each other. We've been together for two plus years. People think that we have just met because of the way that we interact with each other. They think that we've been, we, we've just started dating and when they hear how long we've been together, they were like, you know that honeymoon period is gonna wear off, right? right. You know that y'all not gonna be friends like this forever. Or it's people like, God, I wish I had that with my significant other. That wore off six months after I got married. What I want to add to this is the benefit I've received from dating someone that has challenged me as much as she has. That's a positive thing because if there's not a challenge and there's no growth, there's no growth, there's no development, but I've been encouraged to slow down, take a breath, look at things from someone else's perspective that has a completely different brain chemistry than you and try to understand that my way is not always the best way. What? I mean, 96% of the time it is, <laughs> but not always. And for that 4%, I can definitely see it from her perspective. I have a new goal and that's to continue to be the man that she sees even if at times I feel as though I'm struggling to be that. Oh my god, that was so beautiful. This is where we cry. Can we cry now? <laughs> I want to cry on camera once. I just want to let people know I'm real. Look at these are tears. I see the benefits of having an introvert dating an introvert and an extrovert dating an extrovert on paper. But mm. I have found this relationship really challenges me and I mean that in a good way. Um, I have learned uh, a lot being in this relationship with Justin. Just having the interaction with Justin has made me a better person overall. I don't think that I could have gotten that by dating another introvert. People often have a lot of questions where they think that Justin is the one that's taking over our videos and doing all the talking, not realizing that I actually prefer <laughs> for Justin to take over the videos and for me to just be in the background. I hope this gives you more insight into the dynamic of our relationship, maybe even help you understand yourself a little better. Um, again, we're leaving the MTBI link down below. It's take the test. We'd be interested to know what's your yeah. MTBI type. I would be interested to know who's watching our video. What is your MTBI type? Yeah, take the test, throw it up in the comments. That'd be fun. That would be fun. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Leah has a question that she loves to ask you viewers. When's the last time you did something for the first time? Remember, it's never too late to get up, and get out, and get gone. We will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. catchphrase for Justin is he can't go to the bathroom without making a new friend because it's true. Justin will be the one that will run towards a fire because number one he gets to rescue people, he's helping someone, he doesn't stop and think about it, he just goes and does things that he feels from his core is the right thing to do whereas I'm going to stop and be like I know that person's on fire but we need to analyze like Who's called 911? Did anybody go get a bucket of water? Can they put themselves out? <laughs> can we give them the can we give them the autonomy that they need in order to put themselves out? Should we totally ruin this video? <laughs>